day. Hi, my name is Dr. Menaka and I'm from the Medical Department of University Malaya and I'm here to enlighten you regarding tuberculosis. Tuberculosis is a preventable and treatable disease. In the recent years, there's been an exponential rise of tuberculosis cases diagnosed in Malaysia. The number of tuberculosis cases up to 2016 was noted to be about 25,000 cases. That's an alarming rate of cases diagnosed in TB. Over the past 10 years in University Malaya, there has been a significant increment of new tuberculosis cases diagnosed. In 2005, we only had about 200 new cases of tuberculosis. In 2016, we had about 400 new cases of tuberculosis diagnosed. This is about 100% increment and this is alarming. So we would like to find out why exactly this is happening. Is it because of our high foreigners that is migrating to our country? Is it because of our lack of medical facilities to diagnose and detect tuberculosis? Or is it due to the lack of awareness among the public and also healthcare workers about tuberculosis? Let us find out. TB ini adalah satu penyakit um, lelah bahasa Malaysia. Dia membuatkan penapasan kita tidak begitu baik. Um, I heard is a whoop, they call it whooping cough. Okay. Yeah, and it's like uh, has gone for a while, but now I heard that it's coming back. Tuberculosis is a bacteria that affects the lungs. TB is actually caused by a mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, it usually affects the lung. Mycobacterium uh, tuberculosis, as I'm sure um, most of you know, is a very slow-growing organism. Uh, and it also has a very uh, special structure in its cell wall called the mycolic acid. So this mycolic acid um, enables um, mycobacterium tuberculosis to resist the decolorizing uh, effect of acid alcohol during staining procedures. So um, this is why mycobacterium tuberculosis is called um, acid fast bacilli. So because of the mycolic acid in, in the cell wall of mycobacterium tuberculosis, uh, we need to use uh, special staining techniques uh, to visualize the organism under the microscope. And, um, and because mycobacterium tuberculosis is a slow-growing organism um, and it requires uh, special nutrients to grow, we need to use uh, special culturing techniques to grow it in the laboratory. I don't know. Uh, tak tahu, tak pasti. Uh, what I understand is um, uh, when a person cough, the droplets will get transmitted in the air and then the next person who inhale it will may get it. TB is actually transmitted via airborne and uh, usually when we cough or sneeze or even when we sing or talk, it's actually uh, will disperse out all these air uh, droplets which is 1 to 5 micrometer. And all these uh, droplets, air droplets actually is inhaled into our lung and from the airways you go to the terminal alveoli and the mycobacteria will sit over there and infect the lung. If let's say the patient's uh, immunity is poor and unable to contain the mycobacteria, it will cause the disease called tuberculosis. Malay? Yes. If I'm not wrong, if in the early stages. Um, I understand it is, but it's just take a longer time than usual. Anti-TB can be treated by our conventional anti-TB medications. They are isoniazide, rifampicin, etambuto and pyrazinamide. We can categorize the treatment into two phases. The intensive phase, which you need to use four types of medication. And the second phase will be the maintenance phase whereby you need to use two types of medications. Some of the patients who have difficult or severe type of TB that warrant treatment up to 9 months until 12 months. Honestly, I'm not sure. I suppose with medication, I think everything is treatable. Daily, it is untreated. Yes, definitely. TB is a uh, Consider the top 10 uh, deadly diseases worldwide. Right? According to WHO, in 2016, there were 10.4 million people suffering from this disease. And now, of these 10.4 million people, 
16% of them died from this tuberculosis. This is a very astonishing figure. And in UMMC itself, uh, the TB mortality has been increasing years by years. Last year, we actually had 50 patients who actually died from TB. And a lot of time, these, these patients, they are very malnourished. They have concomitant uh, medical illness such as renal failure or even co-infected with a HIV infection. And of course, diabetes, uh, poorly controlled, also contributes to the uh, poor immunity for the patients and some of the patients they require to take steroids for any other diseases such as uh, uh, interstitial lung disease or in fact to, for lung transplant or kidney transplant these patients are actually prone to get TB and when they get TB usually their presentations are quite serious and they can actually cause mortality Mungkin juga I don't want to answer that. <laughs> no, it's transmitted. No, TB is not an inherited disease, but it is good to know that any of the family members suffering from the disease itself. As you know, um, we have close contact uh, with the family members and therefore the risk of getting TB is higher. From the interview with the public, we can conclude that most patients have heard regarding tuberculosis but awareness pertaining certain parts of tuberculosis is still lacking. Let us find out regarding the awareness and knowledge among healthcare workers. We have to mask if the patient is sick pun kita kena macam elak macam berjauhan dengan dia lah maksudnya. Um, firstly, isolate the patient first okay. and do contact tracing and after that uh, send cultures to find out whether it is TB or not. When approaching uh, someone who is suspected to have TB, uh, I need to wear a N95 mask uh, and make sure that uh, to prevent that to come uh, at close contact with the air droplet. We go to the next hierarchy which is substitution, which is quite impossible as well. So we start our control measures with engineering control, which is the environmental management. In the environmental management, the primary prevention will be by having this negative pressure room. Okay? By having negative pressure room, patient can be placed in this negative pressure room so that all the microorganism or bacteria come out from the patient uh, air from the patients can be sucked to the general environment. The secondary prevention that under the environmental control will be local exhaust ventilation and usage of HEPA filter. So we can clean up the air. Whatever air come out from the patient from the from the uh, negative pressure room can be filtered out and cleaned up. And then under the preventive personal protective equipment. We urge all our hacker workers to use N95 masks. Make sure they are safe. Whenever they deal with dealing with a TB patient or any suspected TB patient, so everyone should take the responsibility. Patients should wear their their masks as well. Workers should always wear their masks. Make sure you are safe. Make sure the the transmission does not occur. TB is a notifiable disease. Uh, this is because. Uh, uh, it can contract from, uh, it's contagious, it's, it can contract from one person to another and this can be preventable if notifiable early. Perlu kerana ia boleh membahaya dan boleh berjangkit? Ya, uh, yeah, saya rasa perlulah sebab ia penyakit berjangkit. Okay, of course TB is notifiable disease. Under the Prevention and Control of uh, Infectious Disease Act in Malaysia 1988, it is uh, stipulated that all TB cases need to be notified to Ministry of Health so that uh, Ministry of Health could uh, investigate the matter, do the active case detection and prevent further transmission of the disease itself. Latent TB is uh, someone who uh, contracted the infection but it's not full-blown. Tidak pasti. Patients who have latent TB don't show any symptoms of TB but they do have the organism in their uh, body, but it is the the organism is walled off by maybe like uh, granuloma formation. Latent in English word is uh, hidden 
or we can say it is existing but not manifesting. So uh, when we say latent TB, means that uh, this TB is existing in the individuals but it's not yet manifested as uh, active disease. So uh, generally, this individual would not have any symptoms or signs of active disease such as fever, cough, weight loss, um, loss of appetite, as well as excessive uh, sweating, especially at night. Saya pun tak pasti maksud dia uh, Saya tahu pergi ambil uh, macam ubat dia saja. Uh, direct observation uh, something. The It's an abbreviation of direct observation uh, therapy strategy uh, of short course uh, which is a clinic to observe patient who's uh, been treated with TB and the progression after treatment. Okay, that's it. Uh, direct observation therapy short course under supervision for TB patient. Fungsi utama dok ialah untuk uh, melaksanakan uh, perawatan TB dan mengawas uh, pesakit uh, TB dalam uh, penjagaan yang baiklah. In conclusion from the interview with the healthcare workers, we can conclude there's actually lack of knowledge among the healthcare personnel regarding tuberculosis. This could be one of the cause why there's increasing numbers of tuberculosis among healthcare workers. Pleural TB. Initially, I was very surprised that I actually got the disease because I didn't have the typical symptoms of patients of having TB. I didn't have fever and night sweats and my symptoms were very short. And then I was very sad because I was feeling very weak and had difficulty breathing and I couldn't go to work. And then I was angry because I felt like people didn't tell me that they've had TB so I got it or maybe I wasn't angry at myself as well for not uh, doing the proper precautions until I had the disease and then it changed to being very guilty because I found out that my son also was diagnosed with latent TB from contact tracing but later after I met with the doctors and the nurses who's been taking care of me and fellow friends who actually had TB. I felt better. I felt that things happen for a reason. I felt that at least TB is treatable and I didn't have much side effect. And I felt that I can do this. To all the patients, uh, I feel that everybody should be more aware of what TB is and uh, if they have the symptoms to go to any healthcare facilities to be diagnosed and once if they are diagnosed to be compliant on their medication and to be honest with the healthcare provider if they have any problems with taking the medication so that it can be rectified. Uh, so dulu uh, Puan Mazura kerja apa? Uh, untuk makluman, isu saya ni uh, seorang juru SP okay. di Pusat Perubatan Universiti Melaya. Uh -huh. Bilakah dia menghidapi penyakit TB? Uh, dia disahkan mengalami TB meningitis ni pada 17 hari bulan 7, 2016. Apakah simptom yang dia sebelum diagnosis dibuat? Dia sakit kepala, itu simptom apa? Uh, ada batuk atau dengan apa uh, selera kurang makan. I see. And berapa lama simptom ini sebelum uh, dia mas pergi hospital untuk uh, mendapat rawatan? Saya anggarkan lebih kurang dalam uh, enam bulan lah dia hadapi simptom-simptom macam tu lah. I see. And then semakin jadi teruk. Semakin jadi teruk. I see. Hmm. Okay. Uh, apakah jenis penyakit TB yang Mazura menghidapi? Uh, saya dimaklumkan isi saya mengalami TB meningitis mm -hmm. atau ada satu lagi TB pada tulang belakang dia TB spine. Oh, uh. Okay. And berapa lama uh, Mazura sedang diubati te, uh, untuk TB? Uh, isi saya dah uh, mendapat rawatan selama setahun uh, enam bulan mm -hmm. uh, dan uh, sekarang dalam tempoh rawatan lagi lah. And bagaimana keadaan Mazura dari Permulaan sampai sekarang. Uh, 
uh, secara keseluruhannya saya tengok isteri saya ni makin merosot lah dia punya kesihatan, kesihatan okay. daripada keadaan yang boleh bercakap mm-hmm. sehingga lah yang tak boleh bercakap dengan fizikal dia yang dah hampir lumpuh lah I separuh see. badan ha. okay. macam mana Encik sekarang menjaga isteri uh, untuk um, masalah ini sekarang yeah. Untuk untuk penjagaan ini saya serahkan kepada ibu mertua saya, uh-huh. iaitu ibu kepada Mazura. Uh, sewaktu saya bekerja saya memang harapkan uh, ibu mertua lah yang tolong tolong jaga, tolong bagi makan, ubat apa eh uh, macam tu lah dia punya uh, apa penjagaan yang uh, family kami kita buat lah. I see. Uh, so sum, maz, semua perlu dibuat untuk uh, Mazura. Semua perlu di, uh, dibantu. Dibantu. Uh, 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 yeah. Mazura tak boleh. Dia tak, tak mampu bu- untuk lakukan secara sendirian lah. Dia, I see. Dia kena bantu lah. Uh, Inci ada anak juga. Ada anak memiliki dua orang lah anak. Oh um, okay. And Inci adalah seorang sahaja yang bekerja untuk menampung uh, untuk keluarga. Untuk menampung keluarga. Untuk keluarga kami ni saya lah yang seorang Inci, bekerja. Oh, okay. okay. And uh, Mazura umur berapa? Uh, untuk makluman cik, uh, isteri saya sekarang dah umur usia 30 tahun. Uh. Uh, okay. Jadi usia dia agak muda lah yes. dengan, dengan keadaan sekarang. Yeah. Uh, apa dia, apa nak? dia nak? Uh, dia, dia just menangis. Uh. Uh, macam tu lah. Tapi tidak senyap macam ni lah hmm. dia punya keadaan. Uh, oh, yang satu, sahaja. yang lima tahun tu ada masalah sikit, hmm. ada dikuatiri, apa, ada autism lah. Okay. Ha, jadi kami ada masalah dari segi percakapan, dari segi dia punya perangai tu agak pelik sikit lah. Oh, ha, okay. Yang tu lah agak membebalkan kami sekolah yeah. lah. Sebab sekarang saya dah hantar ke sekolah tapi sekolah private lah. Okay. Ha, sebab sekolah private tu mungkin ada kepakaran dari, pagi, dari segi untuk handle terus budak-budak yeah. macam ni lah. Ha, macam tu. So from Puan Mazura's case, we can gather that TB is a serious disease that can lead to permanent disability which can affect the patient and also her family members. Therefore, as a healthcare worker, we should protect ourselves. Prevention is always better than cure. We should always use proper personal protective equipment to protect ourselves when we are encountering patients who have suspected TB or diagnosed with tuberculosis. Before 1997, uh, we did not have a special clinic to cater for patients on TB treatment. And uh, the DOTS clinic was started on the 9th of June 1997 uh, to provide this particular service so that patients who are newly diagnosed to have uh, tuberculosis can get registered at the DOTS clinic and to receive the uh, directly observed treatment at the DOTS clinic. When we did an audit for the year 1994 to 1996, so only two thirds of them continue to come back for uh, TB treatment. As we know, TB treatment requires the patient to take medication for at least six months and compliance and adherence to this treatment is a challenge. So that's the reason uh, that prompted me to start the DOTS clinic so that patients with TB uh, can be registered at the, at, at the clinic and they start their treatment after they've been educated by the nurse at the DOTS clinic and the nurse in addition to explaining what tuberculosis is and also emphasizing the importance of taking the medication so that the patient's TB can be cured and also uh, so that the patient's TB will not spread to the community and to his family members uh, also will ensure that the patient come back to receive treatment and if the patient do not come back to receive uh, the supply of HTB drugs the nurse will uh, start calling up the patient to find out why Most of the time, uh, they come in with fever and also cough, right? The cough will usually last for more than two weeks. And also they will have uh, symptoms such as night sweat and they will have poor appetite. They in fact will lose weight. Well, a patient with active tuberculosis, they must have symptoms. Of course, we will have to talk to them 
and subsequently we need to examine them to look for any signs of lymph node swelling and also any uh, changes in the lung findings. Of course, we will need to do an x-ray to confirm whether is there any changes in the lung. If let's say there's changes in the lung, we will ask the patient to produce sputum, at least three samples to look for acid fast bacilli. That's the fastest way of diagnosing TB. However, some of those patients who can't really produce sputum, then we will have to subject them for some invasive procedure. Or in fact, we, we will actually have to give them hypertonic saline nebulizer to induce the sputum. The invasive procedure would be bronchial alveolar lavage. And of course, all these samples will be used in the lab to be cultured uh, and look for mycobacterium tuberculosis. TB medications should be taken on empty stomach one hour before or two hours after the meal for better absorption. But in case of stomach abscess, the medications can be taken after a light meal. All TB medications have their own specific side effects. Refund kissing may cause orange discoloration of the urine, tears, sweats, and it may also stain the contact lenses. Pyrazinamide is associated, is associated with gout or joint pain, whereas for Itambuto, it may cause disturbances in your color vision. Some patients may also experience severe allergic reactions, such as a swelling of the face or lips, or severe rashes, and sometimes patients may also experience jaundice, which is yellow discoloration of the eyes or skin. Uh, as such, it is important for the patient to seek immediate treatment. Compliance to TB medication is essential to achieve cure, prevent the emergence of drug resistance and to prevent further spread of TB. Four groups of people are identified as high risk. Firstly, those who are in close contact with the TB patient, such as family members and colleagues. Secondly, people with lowered immunity. They include diabetics, pre-existing lung disease, kidney failure, HIV infection, malnutrition, cancers, as well as those on immunosuppressants and long-term steroids. The third group are the cigarette smokers and substance abusers. And finally, the fourth group are the underprivileged, for example, homeless people and those living in crowded conditions such as shelters, homes for the elderly and detainees. You would need a TB contact screening. One would usually proceed with a tuberculin skin test, better known as mental test. Patients who have prolonged cough would also be offered a chest x-ray and a sputum examination. Um, the types of uh, laboratory tests that we offer, that we do here at the micro, uh, microbacteriology unit at UMMC um, include the, the staining techniques that I've mentioned as well as the uh, special culturing techniques using uh, Lewenstein Jensen and uh, the Nijet medium. And once uh, we grow something in um, either the solid or liquid medium, we have to do a, a PCR or molecular based test to confirm that the isolate that has grown is truly mycobacterium tuberculosis. And once we confirm that an isolate is mycobacterium tuberculosis, we will then proceed to doing antibiotic sensitivity testing to test and see if that particular isolate is resistant to the first line anti-TB drugs, including uh, rifampicin and isoconazid. Um, and um, although culture is important because it, it allows the microbiologists to, um, to give a full uh, anti-TB drug sensitivity testing result, um, it's still considered um, a, a slow method. So hopefully by the end of the year, we will be able to offer a new and more uh, rapid PCR-based test called the Gene Expert uh, MTB Wave Ultra, 
uh, is a molecular test that um, would be able to detect mycobacterium tuberculosis directly from certain types of res respiratory specimens, um, sputum and bronchoalveolar lavage, and uh, this uh, particular method will be able to detect TB, um, will be able to diagnose TB within, within two hours. So hopefully, uh, when this technology comes in, it will um, help our clinicians, especially our, our respiratory physicians, in, in uh, reducing the time in, in making the diagnosis of PAMI TB. The types of uh, specimens uh, that would be considered appropriate for testing um, for PAMI TB uh, would be sputum, bronchoalveolar lavage, uh, pleural fluid, as well as uh, tissues obtained from um, lung and pleural biopsies. In uh, latent TB uh, infection, uh, these individuals uh, generally do not demonstrate any symptoms. Uh, X-ray by and large is uh, normal and hence uh, it's quite a challenge. Uh, but one thing that we know that uh, any individual who had a past infection before, they would have harbored some uh, memory towards uh, the uh, tuberculosis. And hence, uh, the strategy in diagnosing latent TB is to recall this uh, memory. There are two ways of doing this. Uh, one is the traditional test, uh, known as the tuberculin skin test or the MENTU test. The other one is the, the newer test called the interferon uh, gamma release assay. The incidence uh, varied uh, uh, quite widely across the world. Uh, I think it's largely uh, affected or dependent on uh, the background uh, prevalence of uh, active TB uh, as well as uh, how effective is the TB prevention strategy uh, in the respective uh, country or regions. Uh, across the world, uh, we can say that 30% uh, of the world population had a previous uh, TB infection, although a vast majority of them are in the latent phase. Studies have demonstrated that uh, there are effective uh, uh, treatment for latent TB. There are several regimens, uh, ranges from uh, three to nine months. A lot of people think that they are silent hands, uh, it does not pose a threat to the community. But we know that uh, diagnosing active TB, particularly in the early phase, is often not easy as what it seems. Okay? And these individuals, they are usually still quite healthy and they are quite mobile. So when latent TB reactivated and this individual is having the early uh, infection, the, the, uh, the affected patient can still walk around and then transmit the infection to many other individuals be before the disease is being identified. Hence, I think we need to control the TB infection by uh, nipping the infection uh, from the bud or from the source. So I think uh, latent TB uh, treatment is important. Identification and treatment is important to prevent the continuous uh, spread of uh, TB infection uh, in the community. So, when I menjaga seorang sakit remaja didiagnoskan PTB, uh, di situ saya nampak betapa uh, stress dan depressnya dia bila didiagnoskan dengan uh, PTB. Apatah lagi dia sebelum ni seorang remaja yang aktif Bila didiagnoskan pesakit TB tu dia rasa sangat uh, tertekan Dan dengan keadaan dia yang letih dan lesu Membuatkan dia banyak benda yang dia tak boleh lakukan uh, Kerana fizikal dia yang uh, lemah Bila melihat ubat yang perlu dimakan sangat banyak Lagi membuat dia rasa tertekan uh, Saya masih ingat saya habiskan masa bersama dia satu jam setengah Untuk memujuk dia makan ubat ya. Uh, jadi saya ambil pendekatan uh, uh, menyentuh tentang isu keluarga dia. Saya bagi nasihat semula apa yang pernah kita bincang, kita terangkan pada dia apa itu sakit penyakit TB dan apa dia perlu buat. Lama kelamaan tu dia menjadi uh, dia, dia mungkin dia rasa sedar yang dia perlu uh, menjalani uh, rawatan TB tu dengan betul-betul disiplin dan dia berjanji dengan saya lah yang dia akan uh, ambil ubat. Uh, seorang budak lelaki berumur 15 tahun diagnose dengan PTB tapi malang ni budak tu tak bersekolah tak ada apa-apa pengenalan diri dia anak ketiga daripada tujuh adik-beradik ayah seorang pemandu teksi ibu seorang suri rumah tangga 
uh, dia duduk di ward lebih kurang sebulan sebab kau lekor uh, apa komplikasi ubat TB Uh, lepas tu dalam tempoh sebulan tu keluar, ahli keluarga ada datang melawat tapi uh, sepanjang uh, pemerhatian saya ahli keluarga macam kurang mengambil berat tentang penyakit pesakit uh, contohnya bila nak masuk datang melawat pesakit uh, waris kena memakai topeng muka mask ya, sebelum masuk ke bilik isolasi tapi walaupun berulang kali peringatan diberikan oleh staff nurse jururawat ibu bapa dia macam tidak mengambil kisah tentang uh, perkara-perkara itu yang susah nak tackle adalah pesakit defaulter di foto tu maknanya cuci rawatan lah. Kenapa kalau pertama kali dia cuci rawatan, kita akan tanya second time dia akan pergi pada kita balik, kita akan tanya bila kita tackle masalahnya, biasanya dah solve problem lah. Contohnya, dia mungkin ada masalah wang ataupun tak ada poor family support lah. Maknanya, tiada um, keluarga yang uh, membimbing dia uh, untuk tengok makan ubat uh, lepas tu tak ada bimbingan okay, tapi biasanya pesakit uh, bila nak memulakan rotan TB kita akan bagi orientasi ataupun cara makan ubat semua dan kita galakkan uh, keluarga pesakit datang bersama supaya uh, dapat family support supaya mereka lebih faham lagi apa itu TB ada satu seorang tu dia tak boleh menerima yang uh, dia ada penyakit ni jadi kita terpaksa uh, uh, bercakap dengan dia, bagi dia sokongan emosi untuk supaya dia menerima uh, penyakit dia ni yang bukannya daripada keturunan, uh, ini adalah daripada environment, daripada uh, dia mendapat daripada udara lah, maknanya uh, airborne. Eh. In the mid of the 20th century, tuberculosis was thought to have been beaten. However, this disease is now back with a vengeance and drug resistance tuberculosis is increasing to an epidemic proportion. Every country should have an infection control guidelines to be implemented to fight this epidemic together. My name is Professor Liam I'm Prof Fang. Dr Wong It's Dr Nabila Dr Wong Hua Peiji My name is Hari Suhai Jingyuan Sibao Zainul Kamil Arwi Is Xiaomei Daniel Faris Yen Tong Gayong Ibrashi Tio Shaw Lisa Together we can make history and end history